So we're going to talk about this Rosh Hashanah, which is the beginning of the new year. And, you know, growing up in New Jersey, I had no idea what Rosh Hashanah was. All I knew was that we had a day off of school. And so I was like, I don't care what it is. We're, we don't have to go to school tomorrow, so great. But it's really awesome to actually figure out what these things are because, like Trisha was saying, they're not just Jewish holidays. They're biblical feasts um, that are eternal. And, and you know, the, me, you know, just engaging in the feasts of the Lord, it's, it's um, drawn me closer to him. You know, these holidays that God set up, you know, we can go through our secular holidays, you know, how, how many people go through Christmas and not even talk about Jesus at all. But every one of these feasts, really, if our eyes are open, we can see Jesus in every one. So it's awesome. So today is Rosh Hashanah, or actually tonight it starts, tonight at sundown. So do you ever wonder why all the, all the feasts start at sundown? Anybody have a clue Why? No? All right. Well, it goes all the way back to Genesis. It's like it, it wasn't like a rabbi who made it up or anything. In Genesis, when, when God created, you know, uh, the seven days, he said, let there be evening and morning, and it was the first day. Evening and morning. So um, just a little side note on that. I thought, Lord, how am I going to get, why is that a concept that you start everything at night? <clears throat> and just like a, a simple thing he said to me, it was like, what do you do at night? You go to bed. He goes, I want you to start every day in rest. And that's how I, I get that, because I could never understand why you would want to start something at night, you know? But so the concept of rest, that's how he wants us to operate, in rest. So tonight at um, sundown, whatever time that is, it's going to begin the new year, 5783. So what do we have here? Yeah, there it is, 5783. We're going to go through some uh, slides now. Okay, so this slide is talking about the decade that we're in, but the year 5783, okay, when, when you look at the numbers, even this decade, we can, we can go back a couple slides there to the 80 if you want. Yeah, let's, let's look at that one. Um, you say, where do they get these numbers from? 57, eight, what does that have to do, you know, it's actually Rosh means het, head, Shana means year, so it's head of the year, or the physical birth of the earth, or the age of the earth. So 5783, that's about how old the earth is, what they think the earth is, not six million years old, right? That's another, that's another subject that I probably am not qualified to talk about, but um, I'm sure you'll have other people talking about that here. Um, so anyway, 5783, it's, it's about the physical birth of the earth. And so what's so cool is when we um, look at the Hebrew alphabet, and I'm not talking you have to, you know, learn how to speak Hebrew. I'm talking just the, the letters of the alphabet. Every letter has a number, and every number has a picture, so we can gain prophetic insight. It's really so easy when you think about it. It's like that number means this, and this number means that, and look, Lord, what are you saying? It's right there, really. So, so this, um, this decade is 5780, so we're going to unpack just real quick. We're going to look at the decade, and then last year real quick. And then um, we're going to really look at, of course, this year that we're moving into. And um, so just to give you a heads up, too, when I started learning about the Hebrew calendar, all this stuff was so new to me that I had a chalkboard hanging in my kitchen that was just hanging there, really doing nothing. And I thought, well, I'm going to write the months, the names, and the tribe, and the, you know, feasts or whatever's going on so I can remember. How am I going to remember all these things, Right. And so that's how I've learned. I never meant to share them with anyone, you know, but God had a different plan. It was really just for myself, yeah. So, um, so I started, I did all the months, and so I have these chalkboards available in different forms out there. And um, so I did all the months, and then when we, when we turned over into the decade, the Lord said, hey, how about let's do one for the, the year, not just for the month, so you, you can see what this year is about. So here is the decade. 5780, and so it really corresponds with 2020, right? So, so the 80s kind of equal the 20s, right, in, in our Gregorian calendar. So when we're looking at the 80, you see on the bottom there it says pay, 
And you, a lot of you guys are familiar with pay. So pay is this Hebrew letter with a value of 80, 5780. And so it is a mouth, it is an opening, an entrance, it meets to speak, to command. And it also has two forms. What does our, does our mouth have two forms, you know? So we can look at this duck and be like, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You know, and sometimes the Lord's like, okay, shut up. <laughs> so, so we have to go by the Holy Spirit. So this whole decade began corresponding really at the same time 2020. And so we shouldn't really have been surprised when the very thing that God is encouraging us right at the beginning of this new decade, the Lord is saying, you know, your mouth is, you know, out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart speaks and death and life are in the power of the tongue, that the enemy would come in with COVID, right? Like we shouldn't have been that surprised really in a way. And so, you know, he may have tried to steal our breath, right? And keep us in our homes and keep us from gathering. But greater is he that is in us than he that, who is in the world, right? Greater is he. And even, you know, we were living in the south where there was a lot more freedom down there. Um, I used to call up in New Jersey and, I, and my mother's like, no, we can't go anywhere. And I was like, well, we're riding our bikes on the beach, you know. But, um, but up here it was a little more intense, I know. Um, but, you know, a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Um, but the word of God cannot be bound. That's what the Lord kept telling me. They can kind of shut us in. But God's word cannot be bound, right? And, and if anything, you know, it was, a, it was really like a separation time. All of a sudden you started seeing what people were really believing, where their fears were, where their trust was, even in our own hearts, right? But um, a boldness has risen up in more people than we think really has. You know, I know we can look and say, oh, look at everybody, you know, but the news isn't going to announce all the good stuff that's going on, right? Because, um, you know, they'll say the culture is going woke, right? And whatever that even means, woke, right? But, but there's a greater majority. It's, it's a great awakening is what's happening. People, this is the beginning of the great third awakening. Many spiritual leaders are saying this, that they're already, already in this great third awakening and being awakened to the love of God. And wait, what do I really believe, you know? I read the Bible. Do I believe this? So, so, um, so it's been an awesome decade. As much as the enemies tried to come against us, there's been a remnant, right, that's been rising up and strong, right? It doesn't matter how big it is. It's the strength, right, right? So that was uh, the kickoff of the decade. And then the next slide we're going to flip is going to show um, 5782, okay? For time's sake, we're just going to skip to last year. So this past year, and... We're actually still in it right now until sundown, right? Or this is the last, last drip of the, of the last year. This was the year of the house because we have the 80, which is the mouth, combined now with the Hebrew uh, letter bet, which is the two. So you look at the 80 and the two, and what do you get? You get, a, you get a mouth and a house. So the Lord gave me this declaration that we are to declare his rest over our house this whole past year, and it was a Sabbath year. It was a seven-year cycle of rest. So did you know that? It was a Sabbath year. You just missed it. No. <laughs> you could have been off for the whole year. No. no, but the thing is, don't worry if you missed it because... We have Sabbath rest 24-7 when we're with the Lord. We carry his rest with us. So if he wants to give us a double dose of rest, you know, when it's a Sabbath year, go for it. But, but the Sabbath never ends in Jesus. It's a picture of what we can really have all the time, 24-7. So that's awesome. So we carry his rest into every new year, into every new day. And now we are going to unveil the chalkboard for the new year. <laughs> dun da da here it is. Okay. Woo. Okay. Here it is. <laughs> 5783. I have to say, I am proud of this one. I don't want to be um, boastful, but um, I don't know. I actually, I don't know how that face came out. I practically drew it in the dark. I didn't know how. To make, isn't he cute, though? He's so cute. <laughs> so, um, again, now, so we're combining the mouth, the 80, with the number three which is the Hebrew letter Gimel, 
which sounds a lot like camel. <laughs> and that's exactly what it's a picture of. A camel, it means provision. It means to rise up, to lift up. If you look at that letter, it's a, it's a right underneath the word gemel there. It actually looks like um, a foot out or a, like a person walking. So it's, it's, it's showing forward motion, even a rich man walking, right? So Combining now, I was like, all right, Lord, what, what do we got for this year? What, what are you trying to say? So we have the mouth and the camel, and I felt like the Lord was saying, rise and release his abundant provision. That's what I'm, that's what I'm hearing. And we're going to unpack that because it's like, well, how do you come up with that? So, so we're going to unpack that. And, you know, because we're blessed to be a blessing, right? Genesis 12. We are blessed to be a blessing. We are called to rise up and release what we've been given. And, you know, there's not many churches that have a ministry like you guys have here, you know? And I was thinking about this message and calling people to rise and release and minister. And I'm like... They're doing it. <laughs> I can go home. No, no. Um, but there's, 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 there's a rising and a releasing. And so, guys, you are blessed to be a part of this church. You are blessed. Your pastors, they're camels. They are camels. <laughs> they minister. They just don't sit home. They come out. The whole staff here. So here's the thing now. We're going to look at this word, provision, Okay. Now, provision is supply that's been made in advance, okay, for future use. And this is how God works, right? Think about it in Genesis. When did he create Adam? He didn't create him first. He created him last. Why? Because when he created him last, he had everything he needed already, you know? So when Adam showed up, God said he got everything. There was nothing more. So that's such a picture of how God provides for us when, he think, when we think maybe, no, he's not. No, that's not his nature. If he did that for Adam, he's doing it for us. He's doing it for us. And it's extravagant provision. It's not just here's a dollar, you know. I mean, it's over the top, you know. And I heard this said one time, if you can't imagine God as your father, because maybe your father was kind of stingy or something, or wasn't, didn't want to give you 10 bucks when you needed it. Imagine him as your grandfather, <laughs> because your grandfather maybe would give you 100, you know. Um, well, I don't know about my grandfather, but <laughs> probably my dad would. But, um, but it's extravagant provision. And, you know, when I was drawing these, uh, the chalkboard here and, and getting verses, and I thought, you know, I could draw probably 20 chalkboards filled, you know, fill the whole church, because that's how much provision God has. A caravan of camels. I mean, a caravan. I don't know why we think God is stingy, you know. God is El Shaddai, not El Chipo, right? I didn't make that one up. I stole that one from someone else. But he's a lavish giver. He's not a taker. He's not a taker. Not a taker. Why? Why? Because he loves us. God gave his only begotten son that whosoever uh, believes in him. Wait, for God so loved the world. That's what I wanted to say. For God so loved the world, right, that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And not just eternal life in heaven but life now. That's when we need it. Heaven is like, okay, fine. I think a lot of people put off receiving Jesus because heaven so far, my life is happening now. How can he help me now? But that's the whole reason why Jesus came. Eternal life is knowing God now. And Jesus said, right, that he came to give us life and life abundance, right? Now, now, now. Romans 8.32, I love this, about God's extravagant provision. He said in Romans, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, the whole world, everybody, how, he, how will he not also, along with him, his only, you know, begotten son, graciously give us all things? It's like over in abundance. 
All right. Well, we're going to look at this first scripture. Um, in between the two humps of the chalkboard, or of the uh, camel there, it says Psalm 65, 11. And I happened to just stumble upon this psalm. And it's in the heading of the psalm says uh, a psalm of abundance. And I was like, oh, okay. 65.11 says this. This is what jumped out at me. It says, you crown the year with your goodness and your paths drip with abundance. Isn't that awesome? So I had to look. I had to look at that word crowned because I was just thinking, you know, a crown on top of something. And so when I looked it up, it said to surmount or to overcome. So then I went back and I put, well, wait a minute now. <laughs> so that means, Lord, you are overcoming the year with your goodness. That's how we overcome the year, right? With his goodness, his bounty, his prosperity, not with lack, not with a, a poverty mindset, no, we overcome it with his goodness, and, and our paths will drip with abundance as we follow him. So what a perspective as we begin the year. This is how God looks at the year, and not only the year, every day, really, right? So we overcome the year with his goodness, not with our striving, right? You know, New Year's resolutions, right? I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to blah, blah, blah. Right? None of, none of it any, even pays off, right? So overcoming the year with his goodness, and it never runs out. And it's his. How are you going to overcome the year in your own strength? You're gonna, your flesh is going to get weary. You don't, we don't have it. When we overcome the year with his goodness, it's by the spirit, and it energizes us. Even if he gives us new assignments, we're not weighted down because we're energized by him. All right, all right. So um, I think I want to do a little giveaway right here. Can I do a little giveaway? Is it a time for a giveaway? I couldn't figure it out. Okay. All right. So here's what I want to do. Carlos here is going to give away. Um, do we have the chalkboard? Can we flip to the chalkboard? Yeah. So we have a, a flash card, a prophetic flash card, just like that, except a lot smaller. Okay. You can put it in your Bible. And then anointing oil for the year. And so um, we're going to give three away. For 83, so three people. Go ahead, Carlos, you pick them out. All right, all right, yeah. <laughs> Who really needs it? Okay. They need to be reminded of God's abundant provision. All right, here we go. <laughs> rise up, rise up, yeah. All right. Well, we need these reminders, you know. Um, for me, like I said, when I was doing these chalkboards, it really helped to have it visual. Like, I'm a visual person. I need to see something. So these flashcards are really good. Here, I'll hold one up, actually. That's what it looks like here. Really cute. And we have them out there. So it's just a good little reminder. You gave them all away? All right. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, cool. All right. So we did that. All right. If you didn't get one, like I said, in the back there. Um, now, before we look at these verses along the bottom, because there's a lot here, and like I said, I could have filled up so many chalkboards with verses, I felt like the Lord was saying, look at the camel. Look at this camel. So, you know, if we think about a camel, of course, what do you think about? The humps usually, right? So um, in the physical, all camels have at least one hump. And it's not full of water, right? Everybody thinks it's full of water. Um, it's actually full of fat, <laughs> believe it or not. But that fat works for them, all right? Make your fat work for you. Um, it, <laughs> right? This year, make it work for you. Um, it actually is full of goodness, and um, it, their bodies metabolizes, and it releases water, keeps them cool, keeps them energy. They endure hot temperatures. But now, speaking of water, here's a little cool fact. They can drink like 30 gallons of water in 10 minutes. Can you believe 30 gallons? I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, in 10 minutes. That's like, you know, filling up your car. I mean, you know, it's like, go, go, go. So um, 10 minutes flat, they can do that. 
And, of course, it sustains them for a long time. And, you know, they, they stand tall. They have these long legs and their long neck. And their whole bodies were really designed to sustain the, the temperatures in the desert and everything. And just in interesting little facts that their eyes, um, they have three sets of eyelids and two sets of eyelashes. Isn't that nice? Yeah. So now, you know how all the girls are doing the big eyelashes? They got it from the camel. That's where they got it from. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Now, they have an ability to shut their nostrils, which I don't know if we, we want to, uh, you know, look into that at all. But, but anyway, the eyelashes is nice. So God created camels, really, to be ideal animals for transportation, Really, they're sturdy, they're reliable, you know, they can go through anything, and they move with confidence, they're set forth on a mission, and they not only transport people, but they transport supply. And so, you know, if you were in the Bible days and you saw a caravan of camels coming, it would be like today if you saw the UPS truck coming. Or the Amazon truck. I prefer the Amazon truck. <laughs> oh, yay. I look, I, my husband laughs at me because I open up our door and just look for things. Just thinking, I, I got a heart of expect, you know, expectation. Is there a gift for me today? I don't even know if I ordered anything, but I'm expecting something. So, so that's, how, that's how we're camels were in scripture. Okay. And um, they transport supply. They are very strong. A thousand pounds they could hold, and they can travel up to 40 miles an hour. Yeah. So when we look at camels in Scripture, there's always expect, you know, expectancy and excitement. Why? Because provision is coming. Provision is coming. So we should be excited, right? Provision is coming. And the thing is, it already came, actually. That's what we're going to learn. Okay. So in the Bible, like I said, there's scene, there's excitement, there's a caravan of riches, right? Remember the Queen of Sheba? She brought it. Remember a wife for Isaac, right, all on the, on the camels? And, and, of course, remember the kings coming to Jesus' birth, right? Frankincense, golden myrrh. And there's hope in the horizon, and there's shouts of joy because the camels are coming. The camels are coming. That's right. So in this year, when the Lord just said, look at that camel, I felt like he was saying, I'm calling you to be a spiritual camel. I'm calling you to be a gamel. Yeah. So there's four camels here that I want to honor. <laughs> Do you know who you are? There's two camels right here. Pat and Martin. Patricia and Martin, I should say. Would you stand up, please? You want to clap for these people? Come on. Up. Yes. Oh, don't pull up the stairs. All right. I don't want to push her up the stairs. Here we go. These guys have been uh, my spiritual parents. God brought them into my life. How many years ago? 1994. Six. Six. Four. Six. Four. Five. Five. Okay. Five. Before I like. Before I like. That's right. We have to look it up in the Hebrew calendar. Right? Yeah, you but, Elijah, right? Yeah, um. yeah. So these guys have been camels in my life. They came out of nowhere. I wasn't even looking for them. I did call you on a hotline, though, right? Yeah, she <laughs> called me on the hotline. I did, I did. No, I, I, we have commitment after. He, honey, come on in. <laughs> he, he, he ministry in the hotline. Yes. And I said, now I marry you. If the woman, I take the phone. All oh, right. And never sit with the woman in the car except me. <laughs> <laughs> or your mother. Yeah, right. So I start to talk to her. That's the beginning. Amen. You Amen. finish the rest. All right. <laughs> But they have been uh, spiritual parents to me, and uh, they rose up. They didn't keep what they had. And I have a little something for you. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> they need oil. Now I have to replenish. See? Here you go. Anointing oil and some cards and a little blessing. All right. I love you. Okay. Love you, love you. Yes, love you, love you. So, 
It's, it's been a blessing all these years to actually come back and be in church with these guys. It's really awesome. So, so, so there's camels in your life. And then we have these other two camels right in the front row. Peter and Trisha. Woo! Come on up, Carlos. Come on. They got two humps on their backs. I can see. <laughs> All right. And then we have, yes. So we haven't known you guys very long, really. We haven't known you guys very long. But you have been such a blessing in our lives, encouragement. Um, we so uh, are excited about how you guys stand for the truth. And you are like spiritual gemels. And you rise up and you stand for the truth. And we appreciate you guys so much. We love you. And we have a, you want to open this up? So we gave them a big chalkboard so they can be reminded of who they are and how loved they are. I just uh, also just want to add just uh, 20 seconds here that um, Sam and Trish have been also a blessing to us. And uh, all you guys are a reflection of them. And when we come into this church, we see that love is well expressed. And I cannot say that enough. So thank you. I, I've never been called a camel before, but I take it. It's a good thing. <laughs> With two humps. <laughs> I'm going to make my fat work for me. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, good. You know, they have the maker's diet. This is the camel's diet, right? <laughs> Make your fat work for you. That's all. All right. Well, we love you guys, and just just a blessing to honor you guys. Yeah, yeah. And you know, you multiply. They multiply, like Patricia and Martin. I mean, I, I don't want to like say they multiplied me, but I am a fruit of their labors. I am, and they have many. Oh, thank you. But they have many, and so all you guys are fruit of Trisha and Peter, and when they stand and they see you, they see fruit, you know? And so you're called to do the same thing. That's what we're called, to keep, keep multiplying, right? Amen. All right, so we're called to be these gemels. And so I thought, all right, we're called to be a, a camel. And so what a lot of us do a lot of times is we just go and we do. We start saying, okay, I'm getting to church, right? What do I do? What, how can I do this? I want to get involved. I want to do that. And that's good, but it has to be based. It has, why are we doing these things, right? So that's why I felt like the Lord was saying, Gimel is the number three, but you have to go back and look at number one and number two. So in other words, we have to know our Aleph Bet, which is the Hebrew alphabet. So I made this little um, sketch here. So it's the first three letters of the alphabet, the Aleph, Bet, and Gimel. Okay, so we're going to just look real quick at the progression here because we're going to see that there is a progression. So the first letter is the Aleph. Let's see, it's al alphabet, Aleph, Bet. It means the number one. It means a father. It means a master. It means uh, the head of the house, a leader, right? So the first letter of the alphabet is where it all starts, knowing God. And knowing that he loves you. And you say, well, I know he loves me. His love is so deep and it's the foundation of it all. Ephesians says, continually be rooted and grounded in the love of God. Like this building is like, I know it's a house or a church. The foundation is built on something. And if it wasn't for the foundation, the whole thing would fall. So that's why the love of God is the foundation of anything we do with him or with others, with anything. If we don't have that foundation, things start falling, right? So God, that's why he says, keep asking me to show you how much I love you. I want to keep showing you. Because Galatians 5, 6 says that our faith works by love. That means our believing God is generated when we know we can trust him. 
So God says, I want to keep on showing you because I want you to keep on trusting me because I love you so much. And the more you know you're loved, the more you're going to believe me. And the more you're going to step out. But it all goes back to love. It all goes back to this love. And, um, you know, when we have that perfect love, it begins to cast out fear. Romans 8 says that we have not received a spirit of fear but of adoption, right, where we cry, Abba, Father, right? We become children of God and heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. Everything starts here with the Aleph. All right, so now we go to the second letter. And, and isn't it cool that, I mean, you don't have to know Hebrew. This, we're just looking at the Hebrew letter and the number and what it means and how God can minister to us through, through, through this um, alphabet. Okay, so the second one is the bet, and it's um, right here. It means a house, a body, a church. Um, it has a value of two, a uh, family, right? <clears throat> so what happens here? So if we look at this progression, we receive God <clears throat> as our Heavenly Father in Jesus. And then what happens? He takes us into his house, A and B, Aleph Bet. And what happens in his house? Well, we receive and we rest. And last year was 82. It was a Sabbath year, so it was a lot of resting and receiving. But the number two in general, resting and receiving in the Father's house. And so now that we know we're loved by God, we have our sins forgiven, right? God is for us. He's not against us. We discover all this stuff. We discover, wait, we're no longer slaves. We're sons and daughters. Oh, I didn't know that, right? Um, he also raises us up. How does, he ra how does any good father raise his children? By hardship? By putting sickness on you? By, by punishment? He raise, God raises us up by his word. That's what it says, right? In, in the vine and the branches, he lifts us up by his word. He raises us. He encourages us by his word, and he teaches us by his word. So in the house is where we're raised, where we're brought up, right? So first, we, we know our Abba Father. We get raised up in his house. Oh, here's a good one. Here we learn that we've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of, here, of his dear son. That's out of Colossians. We're in a different kingdom. How many of us are still living like we're in the old kingdom? Right? Wait a minute. It's like water on my face. You know, Trisha, you were talking about how um, being the exposure of this year, right? Exposing things. And it's like waking up to seeing what things really are in the good and in the bad. Like, know your identity. This is who you really are, right? So we want to get waking up to our true identity. Now, here's the thing about this letter. If that's a picture of a house, isn't it missing a wall? <laughs> Shouldn't it be a square? When I draw a house, I draw a square like this. So, but that's not a mistake. There's an open side for a reason. You're never supposed to stay in that house can't stay in here, right? You're not locking us in after the service, are you? Okay, right. <laughs> but a lot of churches might say, you know, come join the club and stay in here and don't go out and everything. But in God's house, we are called to rest and receive and then go. Go. Like any good parent, wouldn't they wouldn't make you stay in the house for, until you're, you know, 50 years old, right? They wouldn't, come on, go. Go with your life. Um. So it has an open door. Now, the great thing is, is when you see that open door and God says, go, you don't go by yourself. Isn't that great? Why? Because the Holy Spirit is in us. So he goes with us, right? He goes before us. He's behind us, left, right? Anywhere we look, he's with us because we are his temple. <clears throat> it's awesome awesome. This is who we really are. I mean, you can just meditate on that for the week. You know? Like, I am the habitation of God. What can man do to me, right? And so when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we, we receive that power, right, and boldness to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. So, you know, when we're in God's house, 
we discover we're a full house. We are a full house. And that, all, all the provision, all the fullness was never meant to end in our house. That's the thing. You can say, I'm so good, I'm good, and I'm just going to keep it all to myself. God is saying we are meant to go. We are meant to be a blessing. We are blessed to be a blessing. Yeah, yeah. All right. So it's then when we can really be a genuine gimel. We are loaded up with enough and extra, right? And um, we're not loaded down with the cares of this world. That was the other thing. You're going to be loaded up. We can put that camel back up there if you don't mind. Thank you, guys. Um, if we want to be loaded up, we don't be loaded up with the cares of this world, right? And so a cool thing is, is that, you know, a lot of us feel bad dumping our stuff on God. But it's actually a form of worship. Actually, Daniel Amstess, he's the guy who, who mentioned this, uh, a friend of yours coming here in uh, December. Yeah. He said this. He's like, casting your cares on God is a form of worship because God says, cast your cares upon me. So we're worshiping him. You know, the devil wants us to make, make us feel bad. Why are you doing that to God? Give him in all your junk. No. So, so we cast our cares on him as this gimel. His yoke is easy and his burden is light, right? If we're in God's will, there's an easiness to it. Not to say that it's not work, but there's grace. There's spiritual energy to do his work. We're not loaded down. And we're ready in season and out of season. We press forward. We go out with joy because we want to bring what we've received to others, Right? And so, really, Yeshua, Jesus, he was an ultimate gimel. So if you call, if you call the camel, it's not a bad thing. Um, because what happened? He came from the Father. He was enriched in every way. And then he came to earth full of compassion. So he did the same thing. So we're just modeling after him, right? Jesus said, the thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. But I came that they may have life and have it in abundance. It's the whole reason why he came. All right. So um, we have a lot of scriptures down here on the bottom. I'm just going to touch on a few because I know we threw out the clock, but I don't know how far it's thrown. <laughs> but Genesis 12, we'll, we'll hit this, uh, we'll hit the next one. We've talked about it, mentioned it. It's basically God's initial promise to Abraham, where he says, I'm going to make you a great nation, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And so you think about this, this was the, the blessing to Abraham, but we are Abraham's seed, according to the promise. So this is ours in Christ. So again, we're blessed to be a blessing, right? His, his blessings are never meant to be stored up. They're meant to be uh, enough and extra, enough for ourselves and extra for others, right? And that's why this morning I was standing here. I'm like, these guys are doing it. They are sharing what they've received. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we got another verse. All right. So the question is, here's a good, this is a good one. Um, what is it? Ephesians 1, 3. So you say, well, what exactly have I been blessed with? You know, people say, how you doing? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. <laughs> well, what are you blessed about? What, what, what exactly am I blessed with, Lord? You know, there's a lot. Go read Ephesians. Oh, my gosh, you know. Okay, so Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. So... Notice, um, this is right at the beginning of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. So before he tells them anything else, he reminds them that they are blessed. Before he tells them anything else. And I think that's what God wants us to know. Know how blessed you are. You are blessed. I always think of this, like we're better off than we think. We are so much better off than we think. Our thinking is wrong, right? We are better off than we think. So he reminds them that they are blessed. And just to name a few, I really encourage you to just read through uh, Ephesians' first uh, couple chapters. Okay, so here's a few of the spiritual blessings we have. We've been loved and accepted in the beloved, beloved, adopted, redeemed, forgiven. 
We have an, obtained an inheritance. You want more? <laughs> you have all wisdom. You have the mind of Christ. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Okay? Your body is the, hem- the temple of the Holy Ghost. You have the resurrection power of Jesus in you now. <laughs> we have all the riches of his grace, and we have the whole armor of God. We have all the fruit of the Spirit. We have all the blessings of Deuteronomy 28. All of them are yes and amen. Ah, we could go on. I mean, on and on. Okay, so now, but it says they're in heavenly places. And so I used to read that and think, oh, they're in heavenly places. Somewhere out there in heaven one day I'll get them. No, that's not true because Ephesians says, Ephesians 2, 6 says, we are seated with him in heavenly places. So the heavenly places are right here and now. So do we believe it or not? Because we believe it, do we believe it or not? Because this is saying that every believer is blessed to capacity, to overflowing. So why is not every believer living like it? Why? Every believer should be like overflowing, abundance, and giving away everything I'm doing. Why? What is the reason why some Christians are are living the abundant life and others are not? Because they believe it. They just believe it. It's by belief. Do you believe it? If you you think you're good looking, you're going to walk out and feel good. If you feel like you're ugly, you're going to stand in the corner. It's what we believe. And this is what God says. So it's not even like we're imagining these blessings. He said it. Right? So we have them. We've got this account that's full. we got to draw from it. Right? We draw from the inside out. We draw from the inside out. All right. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 1 is another verse says that we are enriched in every way. And so you can check this verse out. But what really jumped out at me was that we're enriched. It says, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God, which was given to you by Jesus, that you were enriched in everything. And enriched, I looked it up this morning, one of the synonyms means upgraded. Isn't that awesome? When you get the upgrade to first class, what do you say, no? No. You say, yes. So he's saying that we've been upgraded in everything. I'll take the upgrade in everything. And then I love this, in all utterance and all knowledge. So especially in the ear of the mouth, that means God is saying, listen, I've enriched you. Be bold. Go out there. Pray for people. Speak. Don't be afraid. Speak the truth. I've given you everything you need, and I've given you love to speak it in. So you don't have to look like the bad guy. You speak truth and love. Be my representatives. You've been enriched. You've been upgraded. All right, the next verse, Matthew 10, 7 and 8. What do we do now? What does Jesus say? Freely you have received, freely give. So he, this is Jesus. He called all the disciples by name. So I really feel like this is what God is doing. He's calling us each by name in this new year. You know, just if, if you look at that verse uh, and in that whole chapter, he's calling the disciples by name as we begin the year. He's specifically telling them where not to go and where to go because he start the new year. You're like, all right, Lord, where do you want me to go? What do you want? He's going to tell us. And, and he's already given us power and authority to do these things so that we can give them away. Right? And... The next couple scriptures we'll, we'll look at just briefly. So you say, okay, I'm, I'm rich, I have all this stuff, and uh, God's telling me to give it, but I don't know if I really can. I'm not that kind of, I'm kind of shy, or I'm not like that. But the thing is, is that not only does he give you all the gifts and all the blessings, he gives you the ability to do it, to give it away. This is this extravagant provision. So uh, first, or sorry, 2 Corinthians 3, 4, and 6. Yeah. 
You you know this one. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to think anything of being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God who has made us able ministers of the new covenant. When I saw that word able ministers, when I got a revelation that God made me an able minister, I was like, oh, good. (laughs) Because that means I don't have to do any of this in my own strength. It's your ability in me? Okay. Okay. All right. And 2 Corinthians 9 says that God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things, at all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work. He's like everything. That verse is, it's said to be the New Testament um, definition of prosperity. His grace. His grace is his ability. I think a lot of times I think, okay, grace, it's your unmerited favor. But it's also his ability. Yeah. I need your ability in my life. Because I don't have it. And I don't want my own. (laughs) Gets me in trouble. So this is awesome. And in uh, Deuteronomy, talk about this one real quick. For it is he who gives you power to get wealth so that he may establish his covenant. And we're talking about new strategies. It is God who gives us the ability, the grace to create wealth, money. <laughs> Why? So we can store it up? No. So that he can establish his covenant. What covenant? The covenant that we talked about in the beginning. You're blessed to be a blessing. I'm blessed to be a blessing. That's the whole point. That's the whole point of having the ability to create wealth is to establish a covenant to bless others financially, to bless, you know, to to pour into ministries, to let the gospel go forth. And we partner with him. He's, He's given us everything. He's given the ability. So he's like, all right, let's do it. Right? What are we, are we, are we getting up, you know? And 2 Corinthians says, um, you know, that we, in, in 9, 6, and 7, talks about if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. You know, you reap what you sow, right? But it also says that when you give, you know, give not out of regret or compulsion, but God loves a cheerful giver. So how many times have you sat in services where, you know, they kind of twist your arm to give, and then you start feeling bad, and then you start writing? To, and I've given like that, like, oh, my gosh, I better... Right? Otherwise, what are they going to think of me? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. But not, never here, never here. Um, but in the past. But I love this because God says, let joy be your barometer in giving. Yeah. If you are happy to give, yeah. go for it. If you don't feel like you have the joy, don't do it. God gives you that. He doesn't want you to. Nobody wants a gift from somebody that they feel obligated to give. Right. Keep it. Right? Wouldn't you say, keep your gift? Right? Give it to me because you want to. So joy is the barometer. It's awesome. We don't have to think. We can just let joy be our barometer in giving. And so the last verse I want to look at is Philemon 1.6 that really wraps up um, what is all being said here. And it says that the communication of your faith be effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. So as we start the new year, he's saying that the communication of your faith or the sharing, when you're sharing with somebody, whether over coffee, in church, whatever it is, however you communicate your faith to somebody else, let it be effectual it's, basically, it's only going to be effectual. It's only going to work when you acknowledge every good thing in you yeah. that God has given you. That yeah, because there's a lot that he's given us. <laughs> and a lot of times we start looking at ourselves. But he says, go back and look at, look, at, look at who you are in me. You know, a lot of times we start looking like I don't have, or the devil will say, you know, no, you're not good enough. 
you're too old, you're too young, you're too this. But God is saying, acknowledge every good thing in you, that we are loved, that we are blessed, that we are enriched in everything. We have his ability. We have his grace. Are we, are we uh, receiving it? And we're not even pulling it from the, I, I put my hand up. We're not pulling it from down. It's, it's already in us. It comes from the inside out. Right? Right? So we have all this. So it will be effective. It'll do what, what it was meant to do when we acknowledge him, when we glorify him. And um, I love this scripture. I always love this. Proverbs 11.25. It says, a generous soul will prosper, and he who refreshes others will be him, refreshed himself. Right? We know this. I mean, unbelievers know that. Right? Unbelievers know that. All right. Well, um, shall we stand as we um, go forth? Because um, the Lord said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Because, you know, when we are blessed, not only do we refresh others, but, um, you know, we, of course, we get refreshed when we bless others, uh, bless others. But we're really modeling who God is to people, that he's an extravagant giver. And all of a sudden, relations start happening. It's what was happening here this morning, right? What starts happening when you start ministering, when you start giving? People start opening up. They start sharing their lives with you. They start sharing their needs with you. And all of a sudden, oh, I didn't know you need this. Let me pray for you. Or let me. All of a sudden, you have a community, right? right? So, so it glorifies God. We are blessed, to be a blessing. We are blessed, and we're not blessed just to stay home. We are blessed to be a blessing, whether it's here in church, having coffee, on a text, in a phone. We are to give it away. We are to give it away because it's all pointing to him and his great love. And that's why it all goes back to the Abba Father, to the Aleph Bet. So um, did you want to say something? Come on up. Carlos is... And this is his puppet, by the way. <laughs> it's all actually a golf thing. It's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. I just yeah. want to take just one minute. Um, it just uh, just downloaded on me here. Um, and I think I'm in the streams with a few of you here. And what came to my um, recognizance was some of you consider your thinking. Every day when you get up, Challenge yourself and ask this, God, show me how much you love me, please. Just do that. I promise you, because I was there. Okay, consider your thinking. When the camels came, also a lot of people forget that a camel brought a young Hebrew man and he saved the nation. And he saved a famine from the known world at that time. So much so that during that time, it didn't start off well. But Joseph took it from here and put it through here. And that's how his provision came. You may say, you know, I don't have this provision. That's saying that's great. No, no, guys. It's more real than what you see. Okay? It really is. And when Joseph came up, not only that, he brought his family. Not only him, but his whole family was blessed so much so that Pharaoh, all five, five of him, he comes up and says, how old are you? What do you think it says that in the Bible for? And it stops. How old are you? Those guys were not living past 30 or 40, guys. But how old is Jacob? 130? Pharaoh saw him and said, who are you, man? How old are you? These are the blessings that not just became visual but spiritual to all these people. Amen? So I'm just telling you folks right here, you will have a year of provision. If you bring it from your doctrine right here into your heart, believe it, you will have that. Praise God. <laughs>